Good morning, good evening, good everything in between. Welcome to the podcast. It's episode two of our offseason. I'm your host, Jim Bobernicki, and I'm joined as always by Mr. Gabe Lerman. How are you doing, Gabe? So the Dodgers are visiting Toronto April 26th through 28th. I have those dates circled and highlighted on my calendar, not just for Otani. We'll get into the other reason why. Yep. Oh, we got there's a lot of reasons to watch the Dodgers this year, as I always do. I'm such a big fan of them. In fact, I'm even more of a fan of them now than I used to be. It's crazy. <laughs> and we're joined also, as always, by Mr. Michael Bealy. How you doing, Michael? Doing well. And for Christmas, they got me an Otani jersey <laughs> on the Angels. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's a, it'll be like a nice memory of when Pain. things were pure and the world was <laughs> a better place. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> so speaking of Otani and the Dodgers, uh, let's get off the top rope with the biggest news. I think that's sort of PL adjacent these days. Yoshinobu Yamamoto is heading to the Los Angeles Dodgers for the next 12 years, which I didn't believe initially when I read that. I had to check other sources. I couldn't believe 12 years is an insane amount of time. And also it's a $325 million contract. He's got a few opt-outs based on things involving like his health and how or, and how he plays and if he gets traded and stuff like that. But look, the important thing is, as we all know here on PLTV, Yoshinobu Yamamoto was the king of Pacific League pitching for the last couple of years. He's won every single thing there is to win. Three consecutive MVPs, Sour Mora Awards, Gold Gloves, Best Nines, Pitching Triple Crowns. He's hit thrown multiple no-hitters. He is a stud. He is the king of Pacific League pitching. I mean, I'm sad to see him go, but I'm happy to see him get his payday over in America, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in the MLB. What do you guys think about that deal? Yamamoto will be forever and on my favorite NPB and Pacific League pitcher. I have his jersey still. I'm hoping to bring it to those games in oh, Toronto. I'll sick. see if he can bust out the, the golden Sharpie or something like that. I mean, yes, the contract length is a little long, but you have to remember Yamamoto is 25 years old. He's younger than Oltani was when Oltani came over. No, no, sorry, just a little bit older than that. So that is a big commitment, yes, but he doesn't have that much mileage on his arm. And through his unique throwing motion, I, a lot of people have noticed that he throws javelins in, in between starts to keep his motion intact. Hmm. Uh, I'm eager to see how he stacks up with the best of the national league guys where can we could see a yamamoto versus senga competition oh oh man okay i'm gonna find against that the mets. on my calendar oh, yeah the, circle that one once the, the probable <laughs> pitchers get announced and me selfishly as an oryx buffaloes fan 50 million dollar posting fee like the renovations to the Cosetta dome that could that could accomplish or hotomoto field kobe or go out and, I don't know, sign Clayton Kershaw for $30 million. <laughs> Do it. That'd go crazy. crazy. We started doing more of an exchange where we just start signing big time. Like, maybe it, it, the Japan uh, the NPB could become sort of like the MLS. And, like, we pick up uh, big time MLB players right at the end of their career just for, like, another year or two. That could be fun. <laughs> That's always been the case with NPB. I was about in to fact, say, that was the 1970s in a nutshell. There's always been, you know, that undercurrent, but I think the boat, like Adam Jones a couple seasons ago, I think That's the true. best successes in NPB come from players who are still in their prime. You look at Domingo Santana for with the Swallows, or you look at uh, Adam Walker, who came over from, from the Giants and is now with the Hawks. Players who are still capable who I haven't complete, aren't like one or two years away from retirement. Yeah, like Those Blanco, do the best Osuna. in the Pacific League. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Osuna, absolutely. And yeah, so I'm I'm really excited to see him. And you know, you, you kind of brought something up that I think is an interesting point, is that I think the 12 years is a very good idea for Yamamoto, all things considered, because yeah, he has a very easy, loose pitching motion. It's not a very sort of violent, arm-taxing one. And he's also not really someone who relies that much on velocity. It's that dirty, dirty curveball and his really just stellar control that he usually gets by on. So yeah, I mean, 12 years is a long time, but it's probably a really good commitment for someone as good as he is. And so for other stories, uh, what do you guys have today? What about you, Gabe? You're not going to believe this. We have another trade to announce. This is like a meteor shower with how frequently these are happening. Because during the season, door slams shut. Maybe you'll get one a year. On December 21st, the Saitama Seibu Lions bid farewell to pitcher Tetsu Miyagawa, who heads to the Swallows for infielder Hiyu Motoyama. Miyagawa had 20 holds and a 4.29 ERA in 127 career appearances in the Lions' bullpen, while Hiyu Motoyama has three seasons of part-time action 
with a 234, 286, 318 slash line in 132 games. The way I'm seeing this is that the Lions are trading from their strength, their bullpen, and their pitching staff for where they could see some improvement in their infield. Third base was kind of a, a sore spot for the club last season. I mean, Tonosaki and Genda are amazing up the middle, but those guys got to take breaks every once in a while. I would not be surprised to see Hugh Motoyama in that sort of super utility infielder type role. Yeah, I think Moyama is a good pickup. And um, I mean, the bullpen, I mean, look, if you fear to take someone out of the bullpen, uh, take them, I guess, at this point. And uh, speaking of bullpen arms, do you have something for us, Mike? Uh, yeah, one of my favorite pitchers, one of Gabe's favorite pitchers. I think everybody, one of everybody's favorite bullpen arms, Yuki Matsui, has signed with the Padres on a five-year, $28 million deal that can go up to $33.6 million, including incentives. Pretty excited to see that, and I hope he can, you know, pitch really well for them. Uh, for the first year of his deal, he makes $3.25 million, $5.5 million in 2025, and it just goes up in there until the end, where he's making $7 million. And then he has a opt-out clause where if he has not had Tommy John surgery or has not missed more than 130 consecutive days between 2024 and 2025, then he's able to opt out after the 2026 season, which I thought was really interesting. I don't really usually look at like too in-depth at uh, baseball contracts, but I thought that was a really cool, uh, really interesting detail that was included in the contract. And uh, yeah, really excited to uh, see what he can do in San Diego. Yeah, you know, when I saw the amount, um, I thought, I'm not sure, I, I don't really pay much attention to, like, baseball contracts insofar as, like, how much different positions earn. You know, I hear about the big ones, and that's kind of it. Is that a lot for a closer or not a lot? Because that seemed like a kind of a low number to me, because Matsui rocks. Like, I think he's going to be great. So I was a bit surprised at that number. Like, well, how do you guys feel about that? For a middle reliever or a setup guy, which Matsui is likely going to be, I think it's a fine number. You know, given the fact that there's no posting fee attached, which lowers the overall contract value and the concerns around his health. And let's not forget, he skipped the 2019 uh, Premier 12 due to left elbow discomfort. That's the last thing you want to be hearing about anyone and their pitching arm. So there's questions about how he could perform. He was part of the, the WBC champion team back in now last year. Holy smokes. Pain. So it's... It's an open question to see how he'll adjust to the major league game. In Japan, though, yeah, one of the best, if not the best, closer of the last decade. 236 career saves, and that includes a one-time conversion to starter, I think it was 2020 or 2021, 860 strikeouts, a 2.4 ERA, led the Pacific League in saves three times over five seasons. It, that's, he's that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, he's a... He's a little short, you know, five foot nine, but like Marcus Stroman says, hustle, height doesn't measure heart. And it's going to be interesting to see how how that overhand delivery from a left-hander fares against the, the bats in the majors who do have a lot of swing and miss. So if he can locate that splitter and if he can locate that 96 mile an hour fastball, he'll be a devastating weapon. And let's not forget the guy he's leading into, Robert Suarez, pitched into Japan with the Tigers and the Hawks. So... Interesting little Asian connection there. All I know is now the NOS is going for the big Asian play. Like they want the they want the eyes of the Japanese and Korean markets on them. And you know what? Good for them. I think it's a great I think it's a great idea. And then there's the Rockies go over in the corner going, What's going on, eh? <laughs> hey, what the Rockies are Canadian now? I believe it. Yeah, you know what? The Rockies are kind of like the second Canadian club. I think we can go along with that. <laughs> And so before we get into our Around the Horn segment, let's take a quick little ad break. Take a listen. Hey, you should be betting on sports. Like right now, open your phone, download an app, and start blowing money on silly wagers. We'll even give you a head start with some free money. Come on, what are you afraid of? Are you a whiny little baby with a dirty diaper? Everyone bets on games now. Your friends, your friends' is friends, your mom. That's right, your mom bets on sports. How do we know? Actually, there's no betting on sports in Japan, which means all broadcasts on Pacific League TV are free from the scourge of sportsbook commercials. So you can enjoy baseball without being taunted by the broadcast. Visit PacificLeague.com for more details, or watch Dingo.com for free live games without commentary within North America. And 
And so that brings us over to the meat of the show, the main segment, our Around the Horn show, where we take a look at every team in the league from top to bottom and see what's going on with them. And we're starting, of course, as usual, with our defending champion, Oryx Buffaloes. Take it away, Gabe. I'm going to pass it right on like it's Kotaro Kurebayashi turning a double play. I got nothing at the moment. The Buffaloes have been eerily quiet. And let's not forget, they do just get a $50 million posting fee. So... I'd imagine the brain trust is going to try and figure out the best ways to deploy that between capital expenses and improving the team payroll. So watch this space. Check in with me in a month. Sounds good. And let's go over to the second place team, our our runners up and the playoff team that had a really good run until the finals, the Chiba Lodi Marines. Take it away, Mike. On the other hand, there's a lot going on in Chiba. Like, like a lot. Like, I'm not used to this much happening. Uh, for example, um, on December 20th, it was announced that Gregory Polanco had agreed to stay with the Marines for the 2024 season. I was very happy with that. I was pretty much static with that. I believe I was at work being a hard worker, browsing my phone as I do <laughs> when I saw um, the uh, announcement on Instagram. And I was just like, I let out a really loud yo and people kind of looked at me and I had to pretend <laughs> I was actually working. But um, yeah, Gregory Polanco, big fan, uh, won best nine at DH, tied for Pacific League lead in home runs last year with 26, 242, 312, 450 slash line. So very happy he's back. And then another one that just confused me and I kind of like uh, closed Twitter and like reopened it a couple of times to see if I was like looking at the right thing was that the Marines have signed Neftali Soto, which I did not imagine would happen. And I, I actually am a pretty big fan of Neftali Soto because he was a monster, you know, a couple years ago with the Bay Stars. Since then, he's kind of quieted down like he had like back to back 50 or 40 home run seasons in 2018, 2019, I believe it was. Uh, you know, his home run totals have kind of cooled off these past couple of years, but maybe a switch over to the Pacific League where he can DH and still produce by, but not play the field will be beneficial for him. I wouldn't be surprised if Soto ends up tackling first base will and let Polanco DH more. The Latte outfield is crowded. You got to find time for Ogino, Oka, uh, Yamaguchi, Fujiwara. So there's a lot of people who need playtime. I wouldn't be surprised if Polanco ends up taking the bulk of the DH, where he's had a lot of success. And Neftali Soto, given he can still feel to some extent, will just camp at first. Yeah, for sure. I just figured, you know, and uh, back in the CL, if he takes a day off, you know, he's uh, he, he can't really get a day off. He's got to be out there no matter what. But being able to just, you know, ride the bench, get a couple of bats, relax, and you know, that's good to go. But uh. What else do we have here in my notes that I have to zoom in on because I am apparently blind? Infielder Raito Ikeda and pitcher Shinsuke Nakamori are back in Japan after their stint with the Sydney Blue Sox. Ikeda put up a 641 OPS in 21 games, and Nakamori made six starts with a 238 ERA over 34 innings pitched. Also back from Australia but not healthy in doing so, pitcher Ryotaro Mori, who underwent surgery for his throwing elbow. And a interesting foreign player si uh, signing, James Dykstra. The Marines announced it on December 23rd. Dexter had spent time in the White Sox, Rangers, Blue Jays, and Phillies farm system. And I had to double check whether or not he was related to Lenny Dykstra, and I don't think he is. Yeah, that's an uncommon last name. Uh, the, the case on Dykstra is interesting. Clearly, the Marines see something in there over his, his minor league efforts. He never quite made the majors, but at age 31, he's made it as far as AAA. They clearly see him as more of a prospect or a project to work on. I'm thrilled to see Nakamori doing so well in Australia with the Sydney Blue Sox. That season's still going on, by the way. Make sure you go check out the Australian Baseball League, because not only have the, has Japan benefited from sending players over, the quality of the baseball is pretty good too, as you saw in the last WBC. Two little cliff notes I want to add to that. Shout out to the Marines um, social media team, because I think they do a great job on Instagram. Of all the MPB teams I follow, they are the best Instagram follow. Always posting stuff. They do a really good job. And also, I thought you said Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> was coming back to the Marines. I was like, A.O. Word? Like the guy from WWE? That'd be cool. Yeah, so uh, he's not switching to baseball. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be exciting. <laughs> I'd pay for it. But so that brings us over to our third place team, our last playoff team, the Hok uh, Hokkaido. Oh, my God. What am I talking about? 
<laughs> the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. And uh, I've been excited to talk about this all week. The Hawks got the big free agent acquisition of the year. Former MVP, or I guess maybe not free agent. I think they traded for him. I'm not sure. No, it was, a, it was a free agent deal. It was free agent. Well, good. They got him. Hotaka. I got so excited. Hotaka Yamakawa is coming over to the Hawks from the Lions. This makes me very happy. I got to take my guy from one t- one of my teams over to my other team. It's a four-year, $11 million uh, US deal. And... Um, Look, I mean, if you're familiar with the MPB, you know how much of a beast uh, Yamakao is. You know, he's multiple-time home run leader, former MVP, just a huge power bat, one of the best sluggers in all of Japan. And I've just been fantasizing about how intense this batting lineup's going to be. We got Yanagita, Kondo, Walker, Kurihara, y- Nakamura, and now Yamakawa. It's going to be such a blast next season. And this is exactly what I thought the Hawks needed. They needed a big-time right-handed bat. And it's I'm just so happy the only thing I'm concerned about is I just don't know where we're going to fit him in because we've already got it's uh, we already got DH crowded. We've already got first base. That's just on lock for Nakamura. I don't know what we're going to do, but either way, it's going to be awesome. I'm really happy to see it. And also, quick little side note from uh, via Jim Allen on Twitter. The Hawks have signed Carter Stewart Jr. to a two-year $10 million extension. Last season, Carter Stewart Jr. played 14 games, with, and he had a 3-6 record and a 3.3 ERA. But if you watched him play, you know he's got the stuff. He's just got to develop his control. He's got good velocity, a serious curveball. And if he could become the ace of the team, I think that's the real, just that's just the piece the Hawks are missing. We just don't have a really good starter. We've got the crazy bullpen. We've got now, I think, maybe the best batting lineup in the PL. We're coming for that title, man. Get ready, Gabe. We're coming for that title. <laughs> yeah, between the Yamakawa commit of $11 million, the Osuna commit of $24 million, and then this $10 million, uh, is SoftBank just going to be increasing the cell phone rates for everyone in Japan on their network? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe for all we know, I don't know how they're affording it, but the dog's going to be check. working overtime for those adverts. Maybe it was no all the kidding. money they got from a uh, Senga or did they post Senga? Uh, Senga was an international free agent. Uh, no geez. posting fee. Oh, well, well still we're, we're going to the Hawks. The, the Hawks don't post anyone. They're the only team in the modern era to have never posted a player. That's crazy. That's actually kind of wild. But that just shows a commitment to winning in the in, in the NPB. And so that brings us over to the fourth place team, the team that just missed out on the playoffs, the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles. Take it away, Mike. All right. Yeah, an interesting bit of news from Sansbo. Uh, Eagles captain and second baseman Hidato Asamura is considering a move to third base for the new season. Third was a bit of a gap for the Eagles, and the move would let the 2023 stolen base champion Hiroto uh, Kubakata return to second base while still keeping Utsuki Motobayashi or Tsuyoshi Yamasaki at short. Asamura has earned golden gloves at first and second in the last decade, and the thinking is that moving to third would let Asamura focus more on his batting. I think that's a I think that's a brilliant move. I just want to get in there and say because I thought I mean I thought I, I think I've seen games where he played third and he was great and yeah he's got the bat for it. I just think that's that's a genius. Move. I still maintain that when he picked up his bat halfway through the season that he just dragged the uh, Eagles kicking and screaming to a uh, potential playoff berth. Oh at the yeah, end. absolutely. No, he was he was like a easily team here. MVP. And uh, since the last episode, the Eagles have signed a pair of foreign pitchers who were in Japan last season. Cody Ponce, how do you say that again? What the hell? Ponce, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's you got it. it. You right. got it. <laughs> okay. Cody Ponce heads to Sendai after two seasons with the Fighters, where he went seven and ten with a three forty seven ERA and a no hitter in twenty twenty two. And Nick Turley comes over from Hiroshima with a one point seventy four ERA in forty four games. Given how little Rockton's got any other foreign pitchers in last season, aside from Sung Chiha, the exception, it's a good move. And speaking of ABL earlier, uh. Takahisa Hayakawa put on a clinic. It had four starts, 104, ERA of one over 27 innings pitched, and 46 strikeouts. And just one last note, I something about when, you know, foreign players go to Japan and then later, you know, they test free agency and other teams sign them. I just really like that. Instead of teams always, you know, going out and getting new foreign players. I don't know. Something about, I, just, I just like it. I don't know why. It may just be a matter of they like the, the lifestyle in Japan. They've gotten used to the game. They found success or, you know, all their stuff's there. So might as well just stay put. I'm I'm glad to see Ponce stick, is sticking around in the PL. Watching him pitch as a fighters fan, he brings enthusiasm to the mound every single time he's out there. You remember the, the highlight from his no-hitter where he was... Uh, using choice four-letter words to celebrate Takuya Nakashima's uh, grab to preserve the no-hitter. So having that energy with the Eagles and helping out the vibes there, 
Oh yeah, I like that move. And Turley fills the uh, Yuki Matsui sized hole in the Rakuten bullpen. I know they're going to be converting Takahiro Norimoto. Never hurts to have too many pitchers in the bullpen. Yeah, exactly. And also vis-a-vis -vis sort of what we were saying about players who like stay in Japan. I mean, there's somebody to be said, I think, sometimes for just enjoying the life there. Like, I just I think of Andres Iniesta and soccer who like went to Japan at the end of his career and just played another six years there. Like, spent a long time playing when most guys just kind of go over for like one more payday. Sometimes you go to Japan, you really like it, and you stay. And he got a stadium named after him. Yeah, I mean, great move. <laughs> then took Saudi blood money. <laughs> and so that brings us over to the Saitama Cebu Lions. Uh, like the Buffaloes, I don't really have anything to report on them. They're just keeping on, keeping on. As we mentioned earlier, they did have a trade, but that's kind of about it. Um, you know, we'll we'll keep an eye on where they go uh, in the coming months. And that brings us over to the last place team from last year's season, the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters. Take it away, Gabe. One player coming in, one player leaving. Welcome to the Fighters, Andrew Stevenson. Announced by the team on December 13th, the former National and Twins outfielder played 273 games in the majors with a 668 OPS. Based on some of the pundits I've seen online, this could set the fighters up with the best defensive outfield in the PL between Go Matsumoto, Chusei Manami, Ryota Isobata, and now Andrew Stevenson. Yes, I know I said four names. I'm positive Isobata and Stevenson are going to fight over center field. And best of luck to former fighter Wang Po Jung, returning to his native Taiwan and signed to a three-year, 1.2 million U.S. dollar deal by the expansion TSG Hawks in the CPBL. That's right, the CPBL is finally getting up to six teams again. It's exciting to see, and the Hawks are the green tub uh, club over there. I like any team that has green in the color scheme, so color me a TSG Hawk fan for the time being. And so that brings us to the end of our Around the Horn segment. And we're not going to do a, how our new faces are doing this offseason because we are we just need a minute to kind of see where everyone settles and what's going on there. We already covered that too. I yeah, mean, basically, right? <laughs> so we, we still, Naoyuki Uwasawa is still available for teams to sign. There's been rumblings, but nothing concrete yet. I think he's the only other PL player who we're really keeping tabs on. And so that brings us over to our question of the day. Which remaining free agent do you want your uh, NPB team to sign? And uh, for me, I mean, the Hawks got Yamakawa. I'm good. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted all offseason. I was like, if he goes there, that's everything I need. What about you guys? I already said, Orcs Buffalo, sign Clayton Kershaw. Sign Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> sign Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> what about you, Mike? Uh, all of them. You just want the, the Marines to sign everybody? Sign everybody, win everything. Let's go, Marines 2024. Okay, fair enough. That sounds like a good strategy. That's the strategy the Dodgers are following, I think, this year. <laughs> and the Hawks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that brings us over to the end of today's show. Thank you so much, as ever, for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And we'll see you again very shortly on the next uh, podcast. Take care.